Hello again. I'm quite sure that most viewers like me will have noticed that the only time they hear slavery being talked about these days is in connection with Africa hundreds of years ago. There is no appetite at all for discussing what is going on in Eritrea, an African country, or of the Democratic Republic of Congo, also in Africa, right this minute. There is a lot of slavery in those countries, including pygmies being kept like pets and occasionally even being eaten as part of a magical ceremony to bring good luck. In the description to this video I give links about this. Allow me to quote from the Wikipedia article on pygmies, to which I also give a link. In the Republic of Congo, where pygmies make up 2% of the population, many pygmies live as slaves to Bantu masters. The nation is deeply stratified between these two major ethnic groups. The pygmy slaves belong to their Bantu masters from birth, in a relationship that the Bantus call a time-honoured tradition. Gosh, you'd think somebody would do something about that, wouldn't you? At least you might expect to hear about this when the conversation turns to the slave trade in Africa in the 18th century. But no, not a peep. All we ever hear is complaints from Caribbeans and African Americans backed up by their white liberal allies who say that the main problem is that they need to be given large sums of money because their great-great-great-great-great-great-grandfather was taken from Africa against his will. They never somehow mention the suffering of black people in Africa as slaves right now. There is, of course, a very simple and obvious reason for this attitude, and that is that what we are really witnessing has nothing to do with reparations or compensation. It's simply a good old-fashioned shakedown. If the British and American governments were to set out to eradicate slavery in Africa today, it would be a very complicated and expensive project which would need to be financed by raising taxes to pay for the military forces being deployed to Central Africa. If that happened, then African Americans and those of Caribbean origin who are living in this country would be worse off because their taxes would rise and their take-home pay would fall. Nobody wants that. If, on the other hand, the reparations scam can be worked, then those people instead stand to gain millions of pounds each. California is in the process of making this a reality. <coughs> and in San Francisco, the African-American <coughs> Reparations Advisory Committee has set a provisional figure of five million dollars to every black person in the state. This is over four million pounds a head. So the choice for black people is as follows. Either they are all turned overnight into lottery winners and walk away with four million pounds each, or on the other hand they can see their taxes raised so they become poorer in real terms. Gosh, it's a tricky one, isn't it? This has absolutely nothing to do with justice or fairness, and those after reparations are motivated solely by self-interest. What do you think would be the reaction of African Americans in San Francisco if it were announced that instead of making them all multi-millionaires, the money would be spent on an enormous expedition to Africa to tackle slavery in that continent? Greed rather than altruism is at work here.